This is Protease Circuit Simulation Part 4. In this video, you're going to learn how to understand the concept of current divider using Protease. So, I'll be covering the following things. You're going to see how to use the current source and how to use the current divider and also you're going to learn how to solve few problems. In my last video, I showed you how to use voltage divider. I'm going to recap the concept we did in the last video. So here I got a voltage source of 10 volts and three resistors R1, R2, R3 with the resistance 2 ohm, 5 ohm, and 10 ohm. So the total resistance of this circuit is 15 ohm. And if you if you look at that, the total resistance of the circuit is always greater than all these resistors. And we also know how to calculate the voltage across R1, R2, R3. So the general concept here is the voltage divides in the ratios. So the voltage across R1 is 10 times 2 by 15, where 2 is the resistance R1 and 15 is the total resistance. Likewise, the voltage drop across R2 will be 10 times or the fraction of the voltage which is the fraction is 5 by 15 and for R3 it is 10 by 15. So if you if you just look at the ratio that is the, the ratio of the the resistors alone say R1 by RT this ratio is always less than 0. So that is why the voltage across V1 drops so 10 times some decimal number which is less than 1 is always less than 10. So that's why it is called as a voltage divider. Otherwise, if you put the RT, the resultant resistance above and the R1 the denominator, so you will get a voltage multiplier which is not possible. So again, for R2, the ratio R2 by the total resistance is always less than 0. Similarly for R3. Now, what in simple mathematical terms, so what the voltage divider does is the voltage times the ratio of the resistance. So voltage times some fraction, so that is the voltage drop across this three resistors. So this is an example of a current divider. So you can get a current divider only when you got the resistors in parallel. So I have got three resistors R1, R2 and R3. So the, the input current is I. This current is divided in, into three branches I1, I2 and I3. So if you find the, the resultant resistance of this parallel circuit, you end up using a formula like this. So 1 by RT is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. If you use a calculator, you can just use this method to find the, the total resistant, uh, resultant resistor. You just inverse R1, R2, R3 and get the sum and inverse the sum, you will get the total resistance. And you already know this, the total resistance in a parallel circuit is always less than the smallest of all. So it's always less than R1, R2, R3. So we already know how the voltage divider works. So in a voltage divider, the voltage is divided in ratios of the resistance. So this was the formula you have seen in voltage divider. If you use a, a similar a ratios in the current divider, you will end up getting the ratio R1 by RT which will be greater than zero. The reason here is the resultant resistor in case of a parallel circuit is always less than any of the resistor. So because the denominator is smaller than numerator, this ratio is always greater than zero. And if you just blindly apply the same concept we did for voltage divider, that is the main current times the ratio R1 by RT, you will get this becomes a multiplier 
so you will end up getting higher current than i so that shows this formula will be wrong this way of uh, is the ratio is wrong so the ratio has to be the other way around if you want a ratio which is less than 0 it has to be rt divided by r1 so this is what the difference between the voltage divider and the current divider so in case of a current divider you take the main current the input current times the ratio of the resistance the numerator the rt is the total resistance of the parallel circuit divided by r1 so this is what you'll end up using the current in branch the first branch or current through resistor r1 will be i1 is equal to i times rt by r1 where rt is the total resistance of this parallel circuit similarly for i2 it is i times rt by r2 and i3 will be rt times r3 times i now this is the difference between the voltage divider and the current current divider it's very easy to remember in the voltage divider the ratio will be the the total resistance will be in the denominator whereas in case of a, a current divider the total resistance will be in the numerator you can use a different formula when you have got only two resistors so you can consider this as a, a special case now here i've got a circuit with the two resistors in parallel and the, the input current is i this is supposed to be i and to find the current in the in through r1 and r2 you can use this formula again if you see some of the if you go and look on internet or some of the books it's very easy for you to determine how do you, how you got this formula so the current i1 is r2 this is the other resistor divided by the total resistance times the input current so i2 will be r1 divided by total resistance times the current very easy to remember this formula so current in any branch in fact you have got only two branches here current in a branch is equal to the other resistor divided by total resistor times i if you use if you use this formula you don't have to find the equivalent resistance rt and you might come across some problems where you can use this concept to solve it to solve the problem so i will be um, showing you a couple of problems using this formula so i've opened a new project in protease i'm going to show you how to add few components and after that i'm going to uh, show you the final circuit i don't want to waste time drawing the circuit in front of you now you know how to pick the devices to choose the current source type c source that's the current source so double click and also came to know you can use the voltage source as v source so if you remember my earlier videos i used to add a battery or a cell to provide the voltage and circuit now you can use the v source so double click i'm going to have few resistor again just to just as a has to remind i can use the min res and 222 that will give me the resistor of 220 ohms double click i'm also going to choose a few more these are you know these are resistors with the with predefined values but keep in mind you can always go and change the value of a resistor so there is no probably try 600 or 620 so this one you can also use um, 1k so type 1k i can use this uh, 1k so we've got enough resistor and i'm also going to show you how to use the the probes here so we are going to use the current probe to find the current in a in the branch and we also know how to use the ammeter to check the check the current so i'm going to draw just uh, the first one you know the current source so put the current source here not this one click on the current and current source 
and here the current the direction of the current is downwards. So, I am going to rotate this 180 degree to make it upwards. So, from this point on you can start drawing your, your circuit just make it I am going to draw one simple one in front of you. So, take 220 ohm. So, here I want this to be vertical. So, they look good. So, clockwise I got one. So, I need one more click again and right click and say clockwise. So, we got uh, two registers here you can zoom a little bit and you can just make a connection over here and one over here and click this that. You have to notice something here. Now, when I connected these two registers you got a big circle here. So, this indicates this is a junction. So, you must see the junction. If you just see a wire cutting, you know, another wire that uh, it's it's not a junction, it's just like a like, like a kind of a crossover. So, with this the current source here, you can change the value of the current. You can make it as uh, say 2 amps current or whatever value you want. And I still don't know how to get milliamps, but there must be some other uh, current source where you can change some milliamps, milliamps. Sorry. Now, when you simulate this, you will end up getting the current. So when you hit the the simulation button here, now the simulation is going on. However, we don't have any ammeter to measure the current. Now here, so I have got two resistance of the same value. So, the current has to divide equally between these two uh, resistors. Now, what we can do is I am quickly going to show you how to use this the current probe. So, if you go and hit the the probe here choose this current probe. I am still not very comfortable in uh, using this, but I know how, how other people have used it. So, I am going to click on this main wire. I am going to click once. So, you can zoom a little bit and you can center the thing ok here and I am also going to put one probe here. So, we got a 2 amps of current and if I run the simulation now. So, you can see that this is a 2 amps current obviously the same 2 amps current is flowing in this wire and here the current is split. So, a part of the current goes through R1 and the remaining goes in this way in this direction. So, you know that the current in this wire is 1 amps. You can see the the value of the probe it says I is equal to 1. So, if 1 amps is going in this direction obviously, there will be 1 amps which is in a which is going in this branch. So, if you want to know the the current going through the branch then you have to introduce an ammeter here. Let's stop this thing you know I am going to chain this I am going to chain this uh, uh, the value of the resistance to make this double say 440 ohm. Now, we already know if the resistance is less more current flows through that. So, I am going to change this uh, current source to 1 ampere. Now, if you simulate, so you can see here the current is 1 amp, where the current in this branch is 0 0.33. So, if you take away, if you apply the, the Kirchhoff current law at this branch. So, what I am going to do is I am going to enable the direction of the current. So, you can see here the current coming here is 0 0.999. So, this is uh, probably now not exactly the 1 amp. So, it is uh, just approximation. Now, if you apply the, the Kirchhoff the current law at this junction. So, you will know that the input current must be equal to the output current. So, the current in the resistance R1 will be 1 minus 0 0.333 that will be 0 0.666.
so what I've done here is I have used three resistors with the resistance 1 ohm 2 ohm and 3 ohm and I've also connected the ammeters now when you run the simulation you can see the current through each of these resistors here uh, it says 0 0.55 amps 0 0.27 amps and 0 0.18 amps so the current divides into the branches so you will be asked to find what ratios or what percentage of the current is divided between the branches so I made a simple workout explaining you how to use this uh, current division formulas and also find the ratios so if you look at here I got a screenshot of the of the simulation result the total resistance RT is as I mentioned before you can use a calculator to inverse all the resistance and inverse the the result you will get 0 0.54 ohm so that's the total resistance of these three parallel resistors now the current through resistor R1 that is I1 is equal to the total current times RT the total resistance divided by R1 which will give you 0 0.54 amps which is what there is a bit of a rounding you know uh, rounding errors here so this is what it is 0 0.55 the current through raised to R2 it will be the the total the main current times the ratio the or the percentage it's not a percentage the ratio between RT by R2 so which will give you 0.27 likewise I got current through resistors R3 which will be I times RT by this is supposed to be R3 so that will give you 0.18 amps so if you are asked to find what ratios the current gets divided you have to write all the three currents like this write down all the values and divide by the by the smallest value which you end up getting 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 if you want to get rid of this uh, the decimals I'm going to multiply all these values by 2 you will end up getting 6 is to 3 is to so this is the ratio in which the currents get divided you can also find what percentage of the current is distributed so this is I've just worked out above here so the current through I1 is 0 0.54 divided by the total current times 100 that gives you 54 percent because the the main current is 1 amps it's very easy for you to find the percentage so whatever decimal value you get you can convert you can just show that as a percentage value but I'm sure you know the formula to find the percentage so the branch current divided by the total current times 100 that gives the percentage so here uh, I've added one more current source on the right hand side if I simulate this circuit now we can see you can see the the various current in the branches now it's very easy to draw a circuit like that and get the values here using this uh, using the software but if you're ever asked to to calculate the current using these branches you can still use the same formula that is the formula where you have the the total resistance in numerator divided by the individual resistor because you got two current sources so you might have to use the the some of there are the various methods of you know finding the current in the branches so according to me to solve a circuit with the current sources you can use the the superposition algorithm so which i'll be making a video on probably you can take a, a similar circuit and find you know the total current in the branches by considering one current source at a time so you can use you can use this uh, protease simulation to verify your your workout this is one more simple example on the current divider so what I've got here is a 2 amps current source and two parallel resistor one is fixed one kilo ohm and the second one I've got a, a variable resistor which is uh, 10 kilo ohm also got two ammeters 
So just a recap on how this uh, variable resistance register or a pot works. We have seen earlier a pot has got three terminals. I'm going to call A, B, C. If you use the terminal A and B and keeping the, the middle, the tab, the midpoint open, so this won't work as a variable register because whatever current enters at the point A passes through B. So the entire resistor capacity of the pod will will act as a resistance. So you'll be using the entire resistance. And also keep in mind, it's uh, it's not advisable to keep any points, any uh, uh, connections open. Just, just to understand the theory. So in, in the second scenario, I have kept the B open. I'm using the terminal A and the and the tapping point C. So this will behave as a, a variable resistor because if you move the point, so you know that the, the terminal C is what you can move. Now current enters from A and passes through C. So the point because the point B is open, so here whatever uh, resistance you see between A and C will be your circuit resistance or this or resistance of this uh, of this device so by again by varying c you can vary the the resistance r1 in the third configuration what i've done here is i've shorted the middle point the tapping point and the terminal b so here if you see the current enters from a it passes through it takes you know the path through c and it's very obvious, you know, current always takes the, the path of uh, low resistance, even though there is a there is a path from uh, uh, from A to B, a direct A to B, but there is a resistance in between here, whereas this one is a short. So this is like a, a path with the zero resistance. So I have used this configuration in my in my next uh, uh, simulation. So this is the completed circuit in the protease. So there's nothing different from what we done before. I have got the current source. If you see, I've got the C source. I've got uh, one fixed resistor and one pot. What I've done in the pot is I've, I've changed the properties of this pot and made this as a 10K resistance and I got two ammeter. So if you simulate now, so you can see that, see the, the pod, the total resistance is uh, is 10K. Now the pod is at 50%. So obviously 50% of 10K is uh, 5 kilo ohm is what the resistance is. So if you click on this, this pod and drag the mouse, you can change the center tapping point. Now by moving right, you're increasing the resistance. And uh, when the resistance increases, the current will reduce here and more current will go that way and by reducing the resistance you increase the current in this path and reduce the current other path